Uh, it's also not necessary to pretend away the fact that although we have immigration, there has also always been a sense of identity in this country, which should not be ignored and it should not be pretended away. And a lot of people now say, well, Britain has always been a country of immigrants, therefore we have no uh, identity that's British or no identity here. We do, people feel it, and a lot of damage is done when you tell people not only do you not have an identity, you don't have the right to an identity. So let's go to, let's go to the Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to be checking out an interesting video by Douglas Murray titled uh, Douglas Murray Schools Anti-British Politician with Simple Facts. Wow. I believe this is going to be a very heated debate. So let's start with the video. Go. You are about to see Douglas Murray tell the truth as it is. Douglas Murray takes on a panel of anti-British, anti-Western politicians and completely demolishes them with facts. Douglas Murray lays a defense for Western values and British identity, which is under attack at the moment. Douglas Murray did not hold back. Douglas Murray, what is the... How can you construct a narrative that, you know, unites under one umbrella, if you like, on a rainy day, uh, you know, a hedge fund manager in Weybridge with a young Muslim lad growing up in Bradford. It would be very hard to create it if you were trying to do so from scratch. Uh, fortunately, we're not doing it from scratch. I think you can create a shared British identity through our shared uh, values, through our shared culture, through our history, our past, and that if you teach that and you transmit it well, uh, it's something which anyone can feel a part of. What aspect of that history do you emphasize? All sorts of things. You, you emphasize, apart from anything else, the good and the bad. There's a, a feeling that at some points in our past we might only have celebrated the good things in our culture. Some people would argue in recent years we've only celebrated the bad. Uh, you've got to teach people pride and also awareness of pitfalls. What's the pride then? Right, you know, in, in invention, industry, uh, 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 culture. Uh, in, in all sorts of things. People feel pride in different. Some people feel pride in our sporting uh, achievements. Some people feel pride in our cultural achievements. I think most people feel a bit of all of these things. I think the key thing, though, is that uh, uh, when people talk about a, a shared British identity, they tend to assume that you're excluding people somehow. Mm -hmm. And I would say that the, the thing here, the key thing is you have a core culture. A, a culture uh, uh, on which all sorts of variations are played, all sorts of different people pursue different things around it, but that they know what the core is that they're riffing around. What so, is the core? Uh, is that Benjamin? Benjamin? The core. The, the core in this case is, is Britain, is British identity, is the British history, British culture, British achievements, writing, philosophy, art, architecture. Douglas Murray's call to promote a united British identity rooted in the country's shared values, culture, history, and achievements is a vital proposition in today's multifaceted societal landscape. He stresses the importance of embracing both the commendable and the challenging aspects of Britain's past, advocating for an educational approach that instills pride in the nation's contributions to the world, be they in the realms of culture, politics, or historical feats. This balanced perspective is crucial as it fosters a sense of belonging and appreciation among Britons of all backgrounds. Murray's criticism of the recent focus on only the negative elements of British history is particularly poignant. He suggests that such an approach can lead to a fractured national identity, leaving citizens without a sense of pride in their country. Historical balance is key, and teaching both the good and the bad allows for a more comprehensive understanding of how past actions shape present realities. Supporting his viewpoint, a 2017 study by Historic England highlighted how heritage could play a pivotal role in building community cohesion. The study suggested that heritage sites and the stories they tell can help people understand their community's history and foster a shared sense of identity. Similarly, the British Future think tank has emphasized the importance of history in building a cohesive society. Their research points out that understanding the complexities of Britain's past, including both its global influence through empire and its role in the slave trade, can help cultivate a more inclusive national narrative. Furthermore, Public figures like historian David Starkey and journalist Melanie Phillips have echoed Murray's sentiments. They argue that an overemphasis on Britain's historical misdeeds, without acknowledging its global contributions, such as the spread of democratic values and legal systems, creates an unbalanced historical narrative that undermines national pride. But that's multiculturalism. <laughs> you just said a lot of things there. Yes, but th <laughs> and they're all... multiculturalism. I mean, Britain, by definition, is multicultural. The Celts, 
the Picts, the Scillas, all the early tribes that came here came with, different, with a different culture, even the Romans yes. brought a culture. So um, the new cultures that come here now are doing what, Britain should, what we should be doing here is embracing them, and I, w I would say not even tolerating them, but embracing them, because that is what is at the core of being British. Yes, absolutely. Not, not, not sitting down. If you, you know, if, if, if um, Pickles said, you know, I want Eric to get Pickles. Uh, uh, Mr. Eric Pickles said, uh, you know, he wants to come up with a, an idea of what Britishness is. Could you imagine? A group of men, probably in suits, sitting around a table trying to define what as it is. I say, as British. You shouldn't, as I say, you, it shouldn't so be invented. You're not having to invent something. It's something that exists. You just have to identify. Well, yeah. So what about empire? Empire would be part of it. You would teach the good things about empire, and you teach the bad things about empire. Oh, <laughs> Tell us, Murray. This, this, this is, isn't it? Right? This is actually about class, isn't it? This is about socio-economics. To a great extent, yes. Uh, it, people who come into a country are uh, tend to be on the lower socio-economic class when they begin, and gradually over decades and then indeed centuries, they they they, they come up. Uh, to, so yes, to an extent that's the case, and yes, to an extent it's true that there has always been immigration in this country. Uh, in the last 60 years it has been far, far larger than at any previous point in our history, and so some of these debates are now a lot more febrile than perhaps they were then. There can't be more then. than any time there was, I mean, the, Huguenot, the amount of Huguenots who came to this country over uh, uh, the course of a century was the same number of people that were, that were immigrating into Britain in a few months no, under no, new no, labour. So it, just, it, just, it was a different, it was, yes, but it was just a different pace, and it's not necessary to pretend that away. Uh, it's also not necessary to pretend away the fact that although we have immigration, there has also always been a sense of identity in this country, which should not be ignored and it should not be pretended away. And a lot of people now say, well, Britain has always been a country of immigrants, therefore we have no uh, identity that's British or no identity here. We do, people feel it, and a lot of damage is done when you tell people not only do you not have an identity, you don't have the right to an identity. So let's go, to, let's go to your... Uh, 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 go on, very quickly. I was born in this country, educated in this country, and my identity is precisely not having that identity. I think the, the well, I sense of you, Britishness is not having that identity. That might be fine for you, but a lot of other people, it might not be. A lot of other people want to feel an identity, want to feel a sense of pride in an identity. They might not want to, like you, celebrate not having an identity, but celebrate I having one. I think that one. is what Britishness so, is. Douglas Murray's insights into the role of socioeconomic class and immigration in shaping British identity offer a profound understanding of the historical and ongoing dynamics that influence the United Kingdom. Murray advocates for the recognition of an existing British identity, which, rather than being a new construct, is a rich tapestry woven through centuries of history. This identity is grounded in the nation's historical achievements and cultural legacies, and it should be clearly articulated and celebrated in today's society. The interplay between socio-economic class and immigration has always been significant in shaping national identity. Immigrants, historically entering at lower socio-economic statuses, gradually assimilate and contribute to the host nation's culture and economy. Over time, these contributions have become integral to the nation's identity, enriching it and making it more diverse. This process isn't about reinventing British identity, but about continuing to define it based on both historical continuity and the new contributions brought by each wave of newcomers. Research from the University of Manchester has shown how waves of immigration have influenced various aspects of British culture, from cuisine to the arts, while also playing crucial roles in sectors like healthcare and public services. This research suggests that immigrants significantly contribute to what is considered British, by bringing new energies and perspectives that help the nation remain vibrant and relevant on the global stage. Prominent British historian Andrew Roberts has supported similar views, emphasizing that British identity has been historically inclusive, capable of evolving and adapting while maintaining continuity with its past. According to Roberts, this dynamic blend of tradition and adaptability is what has allowed Britain to remain influential and resilient through turbulent times. Wow. What an interesting debate. Uh, what an interesting debate. It wasn't as heated as expected. But we can all tell uh, in this debate, Douglas Murray was trying to uh, educate us about uh, British identity, which is capable of adapting and uh, which is capable of evolving and adapting. Uh, and he has also made us understand that British identity is rooted uh, in, uh, in culture and history uh, that people should be taught about, uh, uh, about, about British culture, about British it, uh, history, not just uh, the bad things that have 
that have happened uh the battles uh that has happened in british that because of that uh you as a british uh you feel uh you feel let you, you feel less you feel less pride in yourself because you have only been taught uh, uh the the bad the, the bad thing he said people should be taught uh the good things about british and also the the good things are about uh, uh the the good things and the bad things about british that british identity is rooted uh in british culture is rooted in british uh in british history and just like uh douglas murray was trying to uh educate us in this video that a lot of uh people come into a lot of immigrants come into british come into british come into uk uh with their own culture with their own uh culture with their own history but uh british identity uh with their own culture and with their own history uh not exactly uh to change the british identity because british identity uh is capable of uh evolving and accommodating any other culture so in this video douglas murray is saying uh as a British, you have to take pride in your identity, which is rooted uh, in culture and rooted in history. People should be uh, taught uh, the good things about British, the bad things about British, so they can feel pride about their identity. I've really learned a lot listening uh, to Douglas Murray. You can tell he's a very intelligent and learned person. So I also like... Yeah! yeah.